You guys ready? Yeah. Well, as always, appreciate you guys taking time to uh, come to the facility and hear me talk a little bit. Very proud of how we kind of came out of spring and even being able to finish up all the evaluations and going through it all, like we're in a good spot. Obviously, still got a long way to go and so excited, obviously, for the next three months before fall camp comes. We got a lot of work to do, but excited where we're at right now and where we're going to grow it to. So um, especially when we finished spring last time we talked, going through player evaluations, now our players um, are either back home, some of them are still in Boise training, but this is really their, their time away from here. And then we'll start back right after Memorial Day with our first mandatory workouts. We'll go for that really month of June, have a little bit of time off for 4th of July, and then that last four weeks in July, um, right up into fall camp. So excited where we're going to, proud of our staff. They're all out on the road recruiting, um, trying to find the best and the brightest for us that fit here, that are different and fit what we're, what we're about. I was in, I was at head coach meetings last week for the Mountain West and the Summit, which was great to get around some head coaches and pick their brains of kind of where college football is, where it's going to. And so excited where we're pushing to. The Bronco Stampede has been awesome. So it's been cool. We were in Twin Falls, Idaho Falls uh, last week or uh, a couple weeks ago. And so next week we're going to be in Nampa, Coeur d'Alene, and then finish in Boise. So it's been great turnouts. It's a big deal to us here that the whole state feels connected to Boise State University and what we're doing, Boise State football. And so really proud of Bronco Nation showing up in a major way. So excited to keep the Bronco stampede going next week. And then we got some uh, tournaments going on. Our softball team, Justin's going to get his girls ready to rock. So we're going to make sure we go um, see a couple of those games, the tournament, and then our track um, our track teams in the tournament as well. So exciting times for Boise State University. Exciting where we're, where we're pushing forward to. Where do you think you grew the most throughout yeah. spring? I think first off, our depth, Johnny. So especially with the amount of guys that were um, had injuries from season that we had to get surgically repaired that were not playing through spring, we had some guys step up You're like um, to, to show where they are. And so now when we get into season, the competition that maybe we didn't know where it was gonna be is now gonna be higher. Maybe there's a returning starter that was out, but a guy that got a lot of reps in spring that hasn't maybe played a ton for us really stepped up. So I think our depth, um, grew through spring, obviously still got to keep pushing because that's always the thing is how, how your depth is, is how you're going to be as a football team. Um, but probably, and I just got to give our hats off to our players, our families, our staff. I mean, going through a transfer portal and not losing one of our starters through this last window is huge. And I give God all the glory. It's Jesus. And it's a testament to our players. It's a testament to our coaches. Um, that's uncommon. And that's very uncommon. So now there's a couple of spots we got to um, always looking to find ways to continue to burst our, boost our roster and find guys that want to be a part of this. Uh, but we're in a good place. So I'm excited where our depth is now as our whole team is healthy in the summertime. How are we going to compete at every single position? So I'd say that and then excited where just fundamentally and technically we grew as a football team. If it's tackling defensively, I think we took a huge step tackling this spring, which we needed to. Ball security was, was a huge point of emphasis for us on offense and being able to create explosive plays. That grew over spring. So there's a lot of different things, OD special teams, that by no means arrive. We're not ready for game one yet, right? But we're excited where we're pushing to. I know you guys have stepped up the NL game, but you can't compete with some of these bigger schools. Mm -hmm. um, how was there some suspense for you that last day or two? Were you still re-recruiting guys and making sure they were good? Were you hoping the phone didn't ring? What was the last couple of days like at that portal window? Yeah, obviously, just like anything, BJ was stressful. And I've told a lot of people, it's stressful, obviously, because these are players that are good players for us, that are big time players for us. But I love these kids. And they're near and dear to my heart. Um, and I don't want to lose them. And I know they want to be here. But in this landscape with the tampering and what's going on illegally, is a guy that is focused and locked in on what he's supposed to do, is then illegally getting contacted by some schools to leave so it has them lose their focus. That's all, that's frustrating, right? But, um, so there was some stress going through, but I was confident with our guys, I was confident that our players wanna be here. They know they're gonna be developed for the next level here. They're excited to be a part of this team. They're excited to be a part of this group. Um, so I was confident going in, but I, I'd be lying to you if I said I was a little bit stressed going into it. With Ashton in particular, I mean, I've heard some crazy rumors and yep. things about people, you reaching out to him and stuff. I mean, what, oh, yeah. how, what, I mean, just, just, I know we think it's a big deal, but for fans, me, whatever, I mean, is it a bigger deal than we're even it is. talking about that yeah. he's still here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the amount of, tampering and illegal stuff thrown at Ashton and his family and he consistently says I'm a Boise State Bronco I want to be I want to continue to be a part of this it's through the roof way more than I think people even know to your point BJ that I'm probably not even allowed to talk about of what I've heard I mean and that's a testament to who he is as a kid and that's just one of probably 12 guys that have at some point been contacted by schools to get in the portal because of this money 
and they've, they've stayed true to it. And their families have supported us. They know what, that, that we are different here. How we're gonna develop them, how we're gonna love them is different than other places, and they stay true to it. So that's gonna be a constant battle with college football to where it is, and every transfer portal window is gonna be that. Um, but obviously it's our job as a coaching staff, especially my job as a head coach, to build those relationships with these young men. I tell them, like, I'm involved in these kids' life because I love them, because I care about them, to develop them to be the best version of themselves off the field and on the field. And then it's making sure we show them how we're gonna develop them for the next level um, and keeping the families and everyone connected as you walk through the process. Cause that's, that's what we're different here. If someone was here just for the money or this stuff, like that's not gonna be a fit here. No different in recruiting. That's why when I talk to recruits, I'm upfront about those things. Like if you're wanting things that don't directly correlate to you developing, do not come here. If it's about your jersey number and how much money you're getting on the first trip, do not come to Boise State. You will hate me and you will not want to be here. But if you're about developing to be the best version of yourself and be elite and want to compete, bet on yourself, come on. Like you're going to fit here. And those are the guys that have consistently grown and developed here to be the players that we've all seen earn it on the blue and in these opposing stadiums. And so those are the guys that are getting tampered with and illegally recruited. Um, and so I'm proud of our staff proud of our stay, uh, players staying together, especially when there's so many things pulling at their focus. And so there was a, a lot of prayer for it too. Obviously, I'm a man of faith. I pray for our team. I pray for our roster. And so I give, the, give God the glory for it as well. What would you like to see the NCAA do to kind of limit some of that tampering? I mean, can something be done? Yeah. I don't know, Ron. I mean, there's obviously with head coach meetings, and we talked about a lot of those different things in college football from tampering to the different recruiting windows, uh, transfer portal. Um, I've heard a lot of different things I, at this point, to be honest with you, I don't have the answer. And I tell our staff all the time, there's a, there's a lot of coaches out there, obviously very frustrated on some of these things. For me, this is the landscape right now. I can be frustrated and, and let that take away my energy instead of for me, I'm like, how do we make the best out of this situation we're in? NIL, transfer portal, tampering, whatever, whatever that is that maybe is frustrating for me. It's like, let's go find a better way to do it in all those spaces because that's what I can control. Now when there comes a situation where votes and things like that come up to make changes, absolutely we're going to. But right now this is the landscape we're giving and at Boise State, standards are through the roof, love these kids, how can we make it better for them and push for it. This uh, transfer portal has been closed as far as entering week yep. 10 days now. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate getting somebody out of it and what's left in the portal just nationally? Yeah, know? we're always looking to find guys that fit here that can help us obviously on the field, but fit what we are as a culture too. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for those, um, for positions to see if there's the right fit. It has to be the right fit here. Not just because, well, we'd love to get blank position, that's not how we, we would go through that because we're not a big transfer portal operation in regards to college football. We want to develop freshmen, have them continue to grow, but we're always looking to find ways to boost our roster. Um, but guys got to fit, and I protect that locker room at all costs. Not saying I'm perfect with it, but I protect that locker room at all costs. So we're, gonna be lo we're looking consistently to see if there's, if there's someone that can help us on the field and that fit our place. You guys look at, um, yeah, in terms of additions, but there's, there's a subtraction that, you know, significant C.J. Tiller started a game for you guys yep. last year. I think when this stuff happens, there's an assumption that it might be a player chasing playing time, but I'm sure there's dialogue that goes both yep. ways. So uh, what was that dialogue like between you and C.J. Yep. And, and your thoughts on him choosing a, to play at a Mountain West school that you're going to face on October 5th? Yeah, no doubt. Love C.J. I mean, he's you talk about a young man that has worked his tail off since he's been here. Um, but I also make, when I tell our players that I love them, that means that I will sacrifice for them and that is an action. It also means I will always tell them the truth. Sometimes that truth is easier, easier said than done. Sometimes the truth is hard to hear, but it's always given the truth. And CJ's worked his tail off. And so I'm excited of, for him to have an opportunity. He deserves it. But obviously with CJ talked about him being um, the third quarterback going into summertime and that he was gonna be able to compete in that situation for him. It was better to go somewhere and get more play. I get it, but I love that kid. And, and I think the world of him, but I'm always gonna tell guys the truth, where they're at. Sometimes it's in a good way, and sometimes say hey, this is the reality of where you are and where you need to grow going forward. And so I'm um, excited where he's at, and I know he's gonna do a great job there, and I wish him nothing but the best. With, uh, with Malachi and Maddox, you know, yep. that, in terms of that development, yep. what do you hope to see over the next three months? Yeah, excited to see him compete. I mean, we're gonna go into summertime where Maddox is gonna get the blue reps, Malachi is gonna get the orange reps, and they're gonna compete. And everything's gonna be graded, everything's gonna be um, looked at, analyzed from summertime, Everything they do runs to workouts to obviously as we work in the fall camp and competition be high. So I, at the quarterback positions, competition is going to be through the roof. 
as well as every other position, hopefully, on offense and defense. How close are they to, to one another? Right? We'll find out in the summertime. Yeah, we'll find out. Why would you say Malachi's just... grown the most since he got here in January? Yeah. First off, just the understanding of the offense. Um, once again, the only quarterback in that room that was new to the offense, new to all, it was completely different language at USC, complete, completely different understanding of it. And so right now he's got, a, he's got a much better grasp from practice one to obviously the end. And you can see his play throughout spring got exceedingly better all the way through. And, and he did a really good job uh, at the end of spring ball and excited to see him now going into summertime where he knows this offense now, right? He's getting it now. So now let's go see both those guys compete and then the rest of our quarterbacks in that room compete to see who's going to be our, our, our third quarterback. How, uh, with, with Malachi, a lot of people just assumed he'd show up and he'd be the starter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what he thought or his family thought, but how does, you mentioned NIL and transfer portal, all this stuff, mm -hmm. how does that now play into stuff like this when you bring in a five-star kid and they yeah. expect him to play and, and what you're telling him versus the summer and everything else, you know, in terms yeah. of uh, the spot there? Yeah, the biggest thing, like I said, is I will always be upfront and honest. And so that's why as guys come into this program from the transfer portal, from freshmen, nothing will be given, everything will be earned. So no different for Malachi in December is if you want to come to Boise State, you have to be ready to compete. And nothing's going to be given to you. So he knew that on the front end. He knows it now, and he's excited to. And even talking with him, talked to him a little bit earlier today, talked to him when he went home um, for break for a little bit, is come back, we're ready to compete. Because that's the same message I had even when we were recruiting. I think where you get caught in, in trouble is when you have a different communication with someone when you're recruiting them, and then when they show up, it's a whole different situation. Well, I, I was told I was supposed to be here. Uh -uh, we, we don't, we're not playing those games here. You want to come here and compete and earn everything? Come on. And that was the communication that was given to him, and that's why he was excited to come here and do that. He's a competitor. He wants to compete, and he believes he's going to earn the spot, just like Maddox believes he's going to. That's good competition at all levels. When you have an OC that, you know, I don't know if it's in for sure, but it sounds like it's here for one year. I mean, how does that play into this too? Where he doesn't have any loyalty. He didn't recruit either of these guys mm -hmm. really. And yet you want to do what is, gives you the best chance to win this yep. year without yep. you know, hurting people's feelings for the future and yeah. stuff, I guess, too. Well, I think it's, it's, it's perfect for the, for those quarterbacks. Cause you get a, you get a guy that's been an obviously offensive coordinator in the NFL. He's been the head coach here, been the head coach in the NFL, a quarterback developer, proven quarterback developer that, Neither one of them he's recruited. So it's not, well, I got I to gotta play this guy more because I recruited him or not, vice versa. He strictly wants to find the best quarterback to win football games for Boise State right now, right? So all the evaluations, black and white, everything we do, black and white, there's no bias. It's who, this is exactly where you are, this is exactly where you're growing to, and who is going to be the best quarterback for us to win football games. And so... That's why I think it's a great example for our players, especially the quarterbacks, to get the, the feedback they get. I mean, that's as good as it gets. What is the most important thing about an offseason for a football team? Mm -hmm. I think first off is learning to compete together, Jay, because we talk about it a lot. I don't, we're not going to go out and beat teams because, oh, this player is better than this guy. Like, we're going to beat guys because we're a better team. And I think that is sometimes lost because there's a lot pulling at these kids right now in college football. Coaches leave a lot, transfer portal, these different things where that wasn't as common maybe years ago, which is okay. That's just the reality of college football. So now through an off season, as you recruit guys, as your coaching staff gets brought together, you got to bring the team together. And then how do we compete to win together? It's not, well, our offense is going to do this, our defense is going to do this, our special teams going to do this. No, how do we do this together? And that is a constant process in the offseason. Yes, individually there's competitions to see who's going to be the starter, who's going to be in this package. You're always going to be on the cutting edge to make sure what schematics you put in. How can you get as fast as you can? How can we be as strong as we can, as explosive as we can? 100%. But I think overarching wise as a football program, how can we come together and compete as a team? So that, yes, from now until we go down to Georgia, we're competing against each other. And then you flip the switch and all of a sudden you're supporting each other in a game. You got to build that throughout the summertime. You got to build it throughout spring to where you have a group that knows, man, this is truly iron sharpens iron. I'm going to make sure if I'm going against you, Jay, I'm giving my best. So I make you better and you make me better. If you're not, and you showed up today and was like, man, I'm just trying to get through it. You're not helping me. So I'm not getting better. And you're not either. So trying to build that together to where, how we compete as a team, because that's one of our top values as a team is competition. And so doing that, then building it to where it's not just one guy trying to earn a starting spot. It's, we need you to be your best so that that side of the ball can grow, so then that side of the ball can compete with this, this side of the ball, and we can grow together. So it's all about how we're competing together to be the best team.
I was going to say about Irby was a guy that yep. came in as a transfer, and yep. it seems like Malachi gets a lot of attention, but mm -hmm. Irby's got a lot more really behind him as far as what he's done at Cal. So what did you see here, and yeah. what might his role be this year? Yeah, Jeremiah had a really good spring. Very proud of him coming in. Obviously, same thing. Had no idea about our defense. Obviously, mm -hmm. the term terminology techniques are similar, but new for him. And he did he did a, he did a great job in spring. Very proud of where he's at. And he's gonna he's gonna go into summertime getting the getting the blue reps. And he deserves it. Same thing. Competition can be through the roof. Even in the summertime, it's gonna be a seating chart. We still got we still got three months till fall camp, and fall camp is still gonna be competition through the roof. That is what we are building at every single position. But Jeremiah's done a really good job through spring. Excited where he's developing. And what about his strengths? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, you yep. talk about him being good, but what makes him good? Yeah, very savvy football player, very ball aware of the balls in the air. I mean, off the top of my head, I want to say he led our defense with interceptions in spring. Mm -hmm. So the ball, the, when the ball is in the air, he's going to find a way to come down with it. And picking up our defense that quickly and being able to compete at the level he did, that's impressive in regards to his football IQ. Um, and he's got some really good natural ability to, to play man match defense, but also be able to play some zones. Um, I was impressed with where he is, and then excited to see where we can take his game to the next level with with more months of training. There was a report about a group of five top twenty five poll based potentially coming out and having coaches yeah. vote. I don't know what you know about that, or what are your what are your thoughts on that? Because I know you guys would rather be in the, the real top twenty five poll, but what, yeah. what do you make of if that were to happen? Yeah, I saw it, BJ didn't didn't give us a lot of thought. I mean, to be honest, going into this season, it's. We got to go. We got to go work our tail off to win a Mountain West Conference championship. And now, with where the college football playoff is, it gives it gives you a shot. I'm not you don't problem, but it gives you a shot. That's really what we're focused on now. What those things come down the road, BJ, we'll 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 see what happens when it comes. Um, but haven't spent a lot of time thinking about it because focused on we got to go win the Mountain West Conference championship and find a way to get in that CFP spot. That's what everybody is looking for across all 130 whatever teams. That's the focus now. What happens in the future with that? We'll see. Kind of along those same lines. I think Sonny Dykes came out and said you know, earlier today, like there are certain teams between the, the, the G4 and the P5, or the P5 and the G4, it doesn't feel like they're even playing the same game anymore. You look at what, kind of like the stuff Oregon's doing right now with what you can assume is NIL influenced. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're not recruiting, do you feel like you're playing the same game as you go attack some of these guys that you know, if you look on these websites, have have Power Five or Group of Five offers or yep. P Five offers. Do you, you know, yep. do you feel like you're playing the same game right now as some of these other schools you're, you're having to go against? It is a very that's a great question, Jay. It's a very different landscape, right? And so, more and more for us with the NIL space, the collective space, transport. What we've been talking about is we have to be very diligent to make sure we are different and stay different. That is in who we recruit, who we bring on campus, because there is a lot of different things in recruiting going on that were not happening, call it five years ago, where it used to be strictly, this is what it is, end of story. That's changed. There's a lot of different things now that schools can add to the recruiting um, appeal for their university. Um, for us, we're different. And so is the landscape changed? Yes, do, do we feel like we can't go compete against these guys? Absolutely not because we just got to find the right ones. Because guys that want to be developed, want to be the best version of themselves, want to be treated different, like we're going we're gonna to find a way to go have a shot at those guys. That's why it just takes a lot of time on our end. And we do, we don't offer a lot of guys. We recruit a much smaller group in high school than across the country. If you look at offers in regards to us and across the country, we're, we're on the bottom end because we need to get to know these young men, Jay, to see what's their makeup. Because if they're just out there trying to get money or something promised to you or this thing, they're not going to fit here. And that's okay. That doesn't, that doesn't make them bad people. It just they're not going to fit here. Now, those guys that want something different for themselves. And so we recruit a much smaller pool than a lot of people. And that's okay. And so instead of me being frustrated about it, because I'm not, we're going to go, we don't, we don't need to find 500 that fit Boise State. Every year we need to find 20, 25. And we will turn over every rock around the country to find who those, are, those guys are that are built different, that not only can come here and develop, but obviously can do everything we need them to do on the football field. Kind of feels like that that's been the way that it's been for recruiting at Boise State for a while. I mean, Pete famously had the our, our kind of guys mantra, yep. you know, having that mantra, you know, for, for many years, even predating NIL, does that kind of set you up better to, in, in this new age? Yeah, obviously the, the history of Boise State football for decades helps a ton because there's a lineage here has, no, has obviously nothing to do with me but the years and years of being able to find guys develop them putting in the nfl from first round draft picks second round draft picks 
that's, that's a testament to what we do here. So it's not something that is earth shattering for people when you explain what Boise State football is built on. When you say we're a developmental program, more times than not, they're like, that's how I've always seen you. So it's not like, hey, we're gonna try something new. We're gonna do this whole development thing at Boise State. We've never done it before. No, even from high school coaches to parents to players, more times than not, they're like, I get that. And that's where, and I've said this a lot of times, I'll, more times than not for me with recruits and recruits parents is just educating them on our process, how we handle NIL, how we handle the transfer portal, how we handle these things, because it is very different. Because then majority of the other schools that are calling them are telling them things that are not how we're doing it. And that's okay, but it's different. And you find the right guys. Once again, we don't need to recruit the whole country to fit Boise State. We just gotta find the right ones that fit um, every single year, and we will. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take turnover over a lot of rocks. Um, but this is a special place. That's why our players are here. And I know as they grow and develop here, they're going to be the best version of themselves. They're going to have opportunities to be able to play in the NFL. And they're going to be elite in this life. That's why you come here.